Why are MRIs not as great as you think? In this video, I'm going to tell you. Here's the deal. MRIs are actually awesome. MRIs can pick up fractures before you even see them on an x-ray. MRIs can find tumors of the spinal cord. MRIs can find uh, diseases like cancers and tumors inside the spine or the spinal cord. They can find the size of the herniated disc. Those are all awesome things. However, MRIs will not find movement disorders. The most common reason why patients have back pain and neck pain is because their spine is not moving well. The joints are not moving in the way they're designed to be moving. They're moving in a, in a dysfunctional movement pattern. And this often causes pain, stress on the disc, stress on the joints, stress on the nerves, and stress on the muscles, and that's what causes pain. Also, MRIs will never, under any circumstances, find muscular imbalances. If a person has tight hip flexors, if a person has gluteal amnesia, if a person has tight quadriceps or tight hamstrings, MRIs will not find these things. These are very often underlying reasons why people get back pain. So MRIs are not the greatest way to find most cases of back pain. Also, when was the last time you went into an MRI and it came out and they said, well, we've tested you, we've looked at the MRI, and apparently your core strength is weak. That never happens. The MRI cannot assess how long you can hold a plank, how long you can hold a side plank. Can you do bird dogs? Can you stabilize your spine? One of the greatest ways to help back pain is through core strengthening. Everybody knows this, yet we do MRIs to find out what's really wrong with the back. Very often, MRIs give you false positives. Now, what do I mean by a false positive? A false positive means that you're getting a finding that has nothing to do with your pain. I'm going to give you an example. If you are a patient and you have back pain and you have a movement disorder, in other words, your back pain actually hurts when you move it certain directions and feels better when you move in other directions, then you have muscular imbalances. So you have a tight hip flexors, you have weak quads, you have weak glutes. Then you actually have weak core strength. We put you into an MRI and the MRI shows that you have, let's say, stenosis. Okay, that's a common diagnosis. That stenosis is a false positive because it actually has nothing to do with your actual back pain. The problem with MRIs and getting MRIs is that very often patients assume the MRI is correct. So therefore they walk around holding this diagnosis of stenosis thinking they have stenosis when in reality they actually have movement disorders, muscle weakness, core strength problems, and muscular imbalances. When you do treatment on those patients and you get them better, they actually think that you helped the stenosis. You didn't. The MRI had a false positive. The reason why MRIs give false positives is because they're very specific tools that give a lot of detail. I'm going to give you an example. An x-ray, when you take an x-ray of someone, you're basically getting a shadow of their bones. And think of an x-ray as the quality of looking in a glass window as a reflection of yourself and seeing yourself and how good looking you are in that mirror. That's the quality of detail that you're getting by looking into that reflection in the mirror. And that's the quality of an x-ray. An MRI is like a vanity mirror. You give me a person who doesn't feel good about themselves and put them in front of a vanity mirror with all the professional lights and they could see every detail and they could see every little pore, that person will be crying and need medication in 10 minutes. A vanity mirror shows every little detail. And you know this, when you could see every little detail, one hair is slightly off different than the other, one ear is higher than the other, the nose doesn't look the same. So a person that looks in a vanity mirror sees every single detail, and what do they see? They don't see what's right, they see what's wrong. So whereas an x-ray has the quality of a reflection in a mirror, you think, hey, that's a good looking guy. The MRI, you think you're the ugliest thing ever. 
And so when patients get an MRI, there's a lot of false positives. Patients will very often need, psychologically, to hold their hat onto one diagnosis. They, it's too confusing for most people to say you have a movement dysfunction, you have muscular imbalances, and you have core strength problems. Very often patients walk out and go, but, but what's wrong with me? If you just give them one word like stenosis or herniated disc or pinched nerve, something like that, they can finally hang their hat on that and they, can, they have some ownership of it. And the problem with MRIs is because of the false positives, people tend to gravitate towards the thing that they know most. And most people know herniated disc. So a person can literally have a tumor of their spine, but if they hear they have a herniated disc, they gravitate towards that. So the problem is then you have a patient who thinks they have a herniated disc when the reality is they have some other issue that can be dealt with and, and can be dealt with uh, conservatively. So MRIs are not as great as you think. Very often, most doctors understand this and will try to counsel patients in the reality of their condition. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes you get the MRI and the doctor says, well, you have stenosis we're all done, there's nothing you could do. Uh, when you need surgery, get it done. And that's, that's the report of findings. So don't be that way. Try to understand your MRI. It's just one piece of information in the total picture of how to deal with your problem.